In this video, we will discuss the additional funds needed, our AFN equation. The AFN equation is based on the simple accounting formula that assets equals liability plus equity. This term is the increase in assets. That increase in assets has to be financed with increases in liability, increases in equity retained earnings, and then whatever is left over would be financed by either selling new stock or new debt, which is the additional funds needed. The assumption on AFN is these terms increase linearly with sales. So assets is assumed to go up linearly with sales, so are at least these so-called spontaneously increasing liabilities, and then this is whatever is addition to equity and retained earnings. Specifically, this is called the capital intensity ratio, and is an indication of how much capital an industry needs. A factory is going to need a lot of capital to increase sales. A computer science company might not need very much. So we have the assets that are increased divided by sales times the change in sales minus the so-called spontaneously increasing liability divided by sales times the change in sales minus the profit margin times next year's sales times one minus the dividend payout ratio. We will look at two different examples in this video. The first one for full capacity sales when all of the fixed assets are used at full capacity and the second one at below full capacity sales when um, the fixed assets are not used at full capacity and therefore will not be, need to be increased to increase sales only the current assets would be. An even more complex example would be when you start below full capacity sales and then go to above full capacity sales. For our example, we will consider a company with initial sales of 100,000, an increase in sales of 5,000 or 5% so that final sales is 105,000. The assets for the company are 7,000 in cash, 10,000 in inventory, 10,000 in accounts receivable, and net fixed assets of 90,000. The liabilities are accounts payable of 9,000, accruals of 3,000. So the spontaneously increasing liabilities are going to be the sum of these two, the 9 and the 3, which will be down here at 12,000, 9 plus 3. The spontaneously increasing assets are going to be the sum of cash, inventory, and accounts receivable, are 20,000. And the total assets is that plus the net fixed assets of 90,000 for 117,000. The profit margin is given at 7%, and the company is assumed to pay out 50% of its net income in dividends. Ratios we will calculate are the current asset ratio, D15 over D5. So D5 is the initial sales. D15 is the current assets or the spontaneously increasing assets. The total capital intensity ratio, which then includes the 90,000 of net fixed assets, that added to the spontaneously increasing assets gives us the total assets divided by sales of 100,000 gives us a capital intensity ratio of 1.17 and then a liability intensity ratio of the total spontaneously increasing liabilities of 12,000, again, divided by sales of 100,000. We can then use all these numbers to calculate the additional funds needed in the case of full capacity sales. So we're going to have D22, our capital intensity ratio of 1.17, times D6, our increase in sales, minus D23, our liability intensity ratio of 0.12, times D6, again, our increase in sales, minus D18, which is our profit margin of 7%, times E7, our final sales after the growth, which is 100 plus, plus um, 5,000, or 105,000, and then times 1 minus D19, which is our dividend payout ratio. So we have the necessary funds to increase assets minus the dollars of that that are financed with spontaneously increasing liabilities, 
minus the dollars that are financed with retained earnings leaves us $1,575 that will have to be financed as additional funds and the company will have to choose whether to sell new stock or borrow more money for that funding. If we look at the same company in the case where their fixed assets, their factory is partially idle, so they don't need to increase fixed assets, so they're, they're operating at below full capacity sales, then they're going to need, obviously, less money to expand. The difference between this formula and this formula is we have D21 as opposed to D22. And D21 is just this current asset ratio of 0.27, which is much less than the capital intensity ratio of 1.17. So in this case, the company needs more funds to operate, 1,575. In this case, the company is generating more funds than it needs to operate, and it has an extra $2,925. It can use that money to pay back debt, to buy back stock, to increase the dividends that are paid it back. Any of those are options. We can also try and examine a little bit more about how this formula operates. Look at how the variables in it, if changed, will change AFN. For example, let's look at D, the dividend payout ratio. Well, if that goes up, that means the company is pay out more in dividends, so it has less of its own money. You have a negative in front of the D and a negative here. The two together make a positive. So if D goes up, AFN goes up. If the company pays out more in dividends, they have less money to finance expansion. How about if the profit margin goes up? If the profit margin goes up, there's only one negative in front of it. So if PM goes up, AFN goes down. If the company is making more money, then it needs to borrow less to finance future operations. How about the capital intensity ratio? If that goes up, that means you are in a more capital intensive company and you're gonna need more money to invest in assets. How about the liability intensity ratio? If that goes up, for example, you could borrow more from your suppliers and pay them later. So if this goes up, there's a negative in front of it, this goes down. If I borrow more money from my own suppliers, then I need to borrow less from banks and AFN goes down. As mentioned, this equation is an approximation. It is generally not true that the assets a company needs increase linearly with sales. It is not always true that the liabilities to finance those assets increase linearly with sales. Companies are a lot more complex with that, so there are a lot more complicated ways of dealing with this same kind of formula. Some of those complexities include issues like lumpy assets. Generally, you have a company that is created, um, you start creating automobiles, we'll say, and then you sell enough cars that you are fully using one factory, then you have to build another factory. So you have so-called increasing lumpy assets. It is not linear with sales. Same issues can happen with things like economies of scale. If you're going to create a retail store, initially you have to invest a lot of money. Um, you can look at Walmart buying a big building, stocking the building with inventory, etc. But then once all that investment is done to increase sales, you just need to put a bit more stuff in the building. So the amount of assets necessary to add are decreased. This is called an economy of scale. These kind of complications make this formula reasonably limited, but it is a good starting point for students to learn about how companies are financed. I thank you for watching this video.